Hello, in this watercolour demonstration I'm going to paint a simple night scene which could be suitable for beginners to attempt. Now, painting a night scene in watercolour can be daunting for the beginning artist. When painting a night subject you might immediately think I need a lot of, a lot of black paint, but too much black or darks could lead to a fairly flat and boring painting. So we need to inject some color into those darks, trying to think what, what color those that, that night sky really is. Next, we need to include a light source or two and observe where that light is going, what objects it's shining on and the shadows being created. Here, I'm using a street light, just one street light in this simple example which is lighting up the walls of the houses below it and the road uh, in front of it. We've also got an array of edges, so maybe a soft edge around that light source, other soft edges on the edges of shadows. There will be some hard edges though as well, for example, on the tops of those cars. So with the soft edges, we need to work quite quickly using predominantly a wet in wet technique, a wet in wet approach. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter and tutor producing videos and online workshops to help you improve your watercolour painting. And in this step-by-step -step demo, I'm going to go through the complete painting process with you uh, following this subject and doing the outline drawing, the various stages I go through, doing the outline drawing and covering various watercolour techniques, particularly the wet in wet, which is going to be uh, one of the main things that I'll be covering in this demo. And try also get a sense of light with that light source. At the end, I will also give a self critique on myself to see how the painting went. So please stick around for that. The scene then is Cricklade in the UK. This is the high street in Cricklade. And well, Cricklade's main claim to fame is that it's the first town on the River Thames. But this is a simple scene here, a street light, single street light, lighting up the church tower behind. There we are, church tower. My photo is a little bit out of focus, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes uh, a photograph that is low resolution or slightly out of focus can be good when you're painting in a loose style. You don't want to be, you don't want to be bamboozled by all the details. So the light there, light shining across the walls of the buildings, a few windows lit up, then the road surface lit up as well, cars coming towards us, parked cars, a little bit of light hitting the tops of those cars, shadows being created as well. I do have this foreground, let me zoom back out, I do have this foreground car here, which I'm a little bit 50-50 with whether to include. Um, I quite often have said in previous demos, try to avoid having an important object. You know, if I adjust the, the picture down there, it's like having that car there in that bottom right corner, it just doesn't, sometimes doesn't look right from a composition point of view, just overpowers the scene a little bit. But I don't know, I can't really judge with that light there and the edge of the building here, where exactly would my, my shadow line be? Anyway, so I'll probably include the car in there. So a simple scene with a night sky, church in the background, street light, road, and a few cars. So let's get started. Paper I'm using for this demo, as per usual, is Saunders Woodford. I recommend good quality paper like Saunders. This is cold press, 300 grams, and it's 15 inches by 11 inches. I'll describe my paints as I go get into the painting stage. And the brushes I'm using as well, not a, a vast array of brushes. But as I said, first step is to do the initial drawing and get in the perspective of the tops of the buildings correct. Here's some cars down in the car park. So I'm pretty much sort of zooming in to this scene here with a focal point perhaps of the light hitting those cars and another focal point of that street light as well. Quite a loose drawing, that's the nearby the right hand shed or building and then the edge of the roof, the wall coming down as well, strengthen up some of the bottoms of those cars. 
this side of the road as well. And then with a flat brush, I'm just going to wet the whole area now. Now, of course, I could use a sponge. But I prefer to use a soft brush in this example just to give a good covering over the whole of the scene. Get a nice, even covering. It's quite handy here having a light source because I can now and again just glance at that light source to see how much of a, a glimmer, how much of a shine there is on the paper surface just to try and gauge that there's a, a fairly even covering. I sometimes find using a flat brush like this can be preferable to a sponge. It's just a little bit gentler with the pencil drawing below. So a nice even covering of water. Now the paper will buckle a little bit. I'm often asked, do you stretch your paper? Uh, the answer is I don't. I used to a long, long time ago in my teenage years, I used to uh, regularly uh, stretch paper. But to be honest with you, with the size of paper I'm painting with here, it doesn't really um, matter too much with that little bit of buckling because things will, as they dry, as the paper dries, the paper will get flatter again. As I said, I need to work quite quickly here, laying in a basic warmish wash up to and around the light source of that street light. The paints I'm using are handmade professional grade paints from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK. In the video comments, you will see a little uh, link to some introductory discount if you want to consider just trying them out. Uh, I recommend them. Obviously, there's lots of other great brands of paints out there. But I tend to just stick with materials that I know. Apart from brushes, I do <laughs> too often change my mind on brushes. Uh, but as regards paper and paints, I, they're, they're generally a, um, a, a pretty um, um, consistent choice for me. And I rarely, I rarely change my mind. Coming down to the lower road surface now and just getting in an initial covering of the road, that bottom half of the picture, the right hand side hall as well, covering the car that's just below it. And I'm obviously here using a wet uh, a, a mop brush with a lot of paint on the brush so I'm actually adding more moisture into that paper the paper's damp already I'm making it even wetter which is good for this sort of scene I want to try and make sure I get those soft edges go a little bit cooler for this building in the middle the brush I'm using is a da Vinci synthetic mop brush which is uh, let me tell you exactly what is a da vinci cassani cassanio if i'm pronouncing that right it's a size four and as i say, i do often quite often change my mind alternating between squirrel mop brushes and then back to synthetic brushes then back again to natural brushes uh, i seem to never be able to find the brush that sort of does everything. I get pretty close with a lot of these brushes, but never seem to find that that ideal brush that does everything. Anyway, back to the sky, keep piling on the paint. Got starting to go a little bit darker now. And as I was saying, avoid the black, avoid the dark, uh, the dark colours. Now I do have some neutral tint in my palette. Let me go through my colours. Running from the top, I've got neutral tint. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre. Incidentally, these, these colours rarely change. Uh, yellow Ochre, Spring Green. We've got Viridian Green coming down. There's a Viridian Green, Spring Green, quickly, in succession. Um, then I've got Cobalt Green, Cerulean Blue. Probably won't be using a lot of that in this painting. Cobalt Blue, 
Actually, that's a really nice cobalt blue from Mark, from Mark Jackman. Uh, lovely, uh, bright blue, very strong, very vibrant uh, cobalt blue. Ultrain blue, Alizarin crimson, cadmium red, that bright red you can see there. And then there's a light red or English oxide, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow and a few colours going across the bottom, including a couple of gouache, gouache um, colours on the right hand side. Now, this painting is going to look like a complete, uh, an utter mess um, <laughs> as I go through, but hopefully we'll pull it back. We're just piling on the colours. Now, as I'm adding in these extra colours, I am subtly increasing the pigment to water ratio. The surface of the paper is damp already, but ever so slightly, ever so gradually, I need to be making uh, the, the paint, as I say, the ratio of paint to water um, in the favour of paint, going a little bit thicker as I add on these layers and going darker as well. Notice the brush mark directions also quite haphazard going in all sorts of different directions. And that might just add a little bit of extra, another sort of dimension in the finished painting, those, those brush marks rather than having a very sort of labored uh, flat wash. I like to try and get in a few, show a few brush marks and edges of those brush marks in the finished painting. Neutral tint then, let's go really dark. And because we're laying it on top of a couple of other colors already, it's not gonna go that sort of, neutral tint's a bit sort of like a charcoal black, a charcoal gray, a dark charcoal gray, I would say. And because I'm layering it on top of other colors, I'm gonna get some, hopefully some subtle cools and warms just shining through. I'll go a little bit darker on the left-hand side because the street light there is bouncing off different objects in the middle and the right-hand side. And there's a couple of trees, this being winter, the, the, the trees, we've got some bare trees there and their upper, the upper canopy of those trees, the light shining on those. That's gonna be actually an, another slight challenge in this painting is trying to depict those winter trees with the sort of skeleton of those, the, the, the tree trunk and the side limbs and branches. And then as we get, as we get to the top, that little bit of light uh, shining on the tops of those, those branches. There's a little bit of warmth in the car park as we come down to the bottom foreground. Then continue back up to the top rooftops. Now I'm just hitting the area of those of that first tree. So I need to be a bit careful with the edge. Think about soft edges all the time. And you can see the the paint. I've got a slight slope on my board. Now, I ideally, I think this, this technique here of wetting wet might be better on a horizontal surface, but because I'm filming, I need to, and because of the angle of my, my drawing board, it's just a slight angle. I haven't changed that. So I do have a slight angle here. The paint is traveling a little bit, um, going, going down towards the bottom. It doesn't matter too much, but ideally, if I was to do this again, I'd probably choose a, a completely flat, horizontal surface. Watercolour, as you may know, invariably dries a little bit lighter. And so I do need to compensate by going in darker than, than I think because of that because of that drawing, the, the value is getting just a little bit lighter. 
the rooftop is quite dark on the left hand side, the building on the left hand side, softish edge going down that left hand building. It's beginning to take shape. I'm, there's a lot of sort of vibrancy and movement in, in the painting already. Darker shadows across the car park. Again, a bit of a haphazard motion of those of those shadow marks. Trying to keep that middle area light just where I was painting there, just above that. I need to be quite careful not to go over that. I want to have that nice and light. And also be a bit of contrast with the with the bottom of the car as well, that being a hard edge, hard edge against the, a darker hard edge against that lighter area, that might be quite nice, that bit of light underneath the cars. Soft brush is needed here, and this Da Vinci is quite soft. A squirrel mop would be, in my opinion, would be a good bit softer, so if I thought I was going to damage the initial layers of the painting, I might, I might have chosen a softer brush, a squirrel mop brush, but this, this is all right. Another tricky part is the church tower. And with, you can't always judge the different areas around that church tower, how wet it might be and the paint still traveling around there are a few little subtle hard edges towards particularly towards the top of the church where there are some pinnacles uh, above the on the very top of the church tower so i want to try and keep some of those um quite quite like a bit of intricate negative painting around those trying to keep the those lighter areas and trying to get in a bit of a, a harder edge around there. Just flicking my brush towards that lighter area in the middle. Bit more of a an edge to the left hand side of that church tower back to that top peak that top pinnacle and a bit of a harder edge on that right hand side not not too much very careful again around that light source if i think i've gone over it a bit too much quickly try and lift it off. I'm using my fingertips, but of course a, a paper tissue would do or a damp brush, but trying to be ever so careful not to go over the actual lights, the, the air of that lamp itself. I want to keep that plain, that paper showing through. There we are, a bit of, bit of paper tissue there just to lift off the outer areas of that light, just in case if the paper was too wet and the paint still traveling, um, which you often find with, with particularly with cotton, cotton based paper, it, it can stay damp for quite some time and it's, traveling and traveling and traveling and going into that, that lighter area. So I've just um, used a bit of a, a paper towel there to lift off that area. Again, just make sure I've got the top of that church just right. And I don't know whether you noticed, but the 
my brush doesn't have an awful lot of water on it now. It is quite, quite dry. And again, I've got to judge it just right, not go too dry so that I end up laying on too thick a layer of, of paint, which might show in the in the finished painting. But just trying to trying to judge it correctly. I'm now using a smaller synthetic brush, a damp brush, just to lift out some of the area of the tops of those trees. Again, there's a few different ways of doing that. I could, I could, if, if the area was damp enough, I could have used a paper towel tissue to lift it off, but a synthetic brush, a damp synthetic brush, so it's gonna just suck up that paint lying on the surface should be fine. Not a lot of water in this brush now. You can see the way that I created those dry brush marks and the way that the, the belly of the brush is, is sort of bent or curved. It's hardly any water in there at all. Now, alter the colour a little bit for the wall of this building that's facing us. And talking about edges, we've got a hard edge here. The left hand edge of the the left hand edge of the building down to the top of the car which is there I didn't actually draw in too much of that car as I say I was 50-50 in two minds whether I, I would actually include it, but as you can see, I've made the decision to include it. I might, I might regret it at the end. As I say, when I get to the end, I'll give my little critique and uh, make a final decision on whether I thought that was a good idea or not. Anyway, it's, it's, another, it's another thing to have down in the bottom right corner, a bit of light hitting the bonnet and the darks as well. Let's see if we can make it car-like and a bit of a tricky angle for this car as well. We're looking at it at an angle, slightly um, looking down. The, when I took the, the source photo, looking down on it as well. A bit of a tricky angle for a car rather than it being uh, looking at, directly at the front of it or the back of it. Always a bit tricky that. Back to the left-hand side. Paper's still quite damp at this stage. That's the wall. Uh, there's a, a wall just by the side of the street and then some cars this side of that wall and they're kind of all a similar value. Um, we're, we're, it's a bit like a contra jour this where we're looking against the light and there can be, the values can be very similar, these objects connected with each other don't really know exactly where one object starts and another one finishes. There's a good point with this brush, so I can actually quite precisely paint around those two cars here. Well, there's three cars. There's a couple of darkish cars, then a lighter car, 
over on the right hand side that's furthest away from us. So these are the two darker cars and a little bit of shadow underneath the cars. A bit of negative painting around the wheels of the cars. I might need to darken those up just a little bit towards the end. Uh, don't want them being too light and just showing up too much. Need them to sort of just sort of subtly melt into into those cars. Get a soft edge around them. So that's a bit of a shadow there. I think it's quite nice having this a slight angle as well, rising up the the high streets, going up a little bit. There's a bit of an incline to the high street from left to right. We're going up towards the right. I think that's a, another nice little dimension to it rather than it being all too all too flat and flat and horizontal. Bit more warmth on this building on the left hand side. Again, I use my fingertips just to smooth out the edges. And this building is, it does, it does go a little bit lighter down into that bottom right corner. It's a little bit darker on the wall in the top left corner than it does go a little bit lighter down to the bottom right. different brush now. This is a long, you might have seen me use this, this one a few times before. This is a Princeton long round, got extra long hairs and a very good point as well. I like it for doing foliage, branches, trees, wires, fences, that sort of thing. So just getting in the, the structure of the, the, the skeleton of this tree, branches going all over the place. And with, with these deciduous trees, not try not to make them look too symmetrical, or too perfect. So observe the tree give a little bit of, um, just spend a few minutes looking at the tree and where the main branches are. Of course, with some of the branches, there might be a little bit of lost and found. So, drawing in a bit of the branch and then a gap and then a bit more of the branch then a gap and so on. So we don't have a continuous line that, that can give uh, an extra bit of looseness to the, the, whole, the whole look and feel of the tree and the feeling, of, the feeling of a little bit of light hitting some of those branches and a bit of shadow hitting the part of the branch that, that you're painting in. bit more of a, a final, a few final touches to that sky. A few line marks for the bottom of the houses, perhaps a little bit of the, uh, I think there might be a bit of a grass Virgil slope on the far side of the road. So a bit of definition to the edge of that road there on that far side. So 
it's not much paint on my brush at all now you can see I'm not picking up too much water at all just lightly touching the surface here and there trying to get in some very attractive brush marks where where there's a, a denser grouping of branches perhaps there's a bit more of a solid uh, cover and also the tree on the right hand side the street light is lighting up quite a quite a sort of like a little shard of a little slither of the top of the, the tree and then just above that it's a little bit little bit darker back to my mop brush and the car paper is drying quite nicely now and get in this car which I'm approaching in a fairly loose way here and particularly that right hand side because it's away from the the main sort of focal area so I can be a little bit looser with it hard edge on the the left hand side Coming across the, I guess, the top of the, the dashboard there. And a, a bit of the interior of the car. And then the bonnet. Just trying to preserve that bit of light on the far side, just where it's catching a bit of the, the street light. Might need to um, make that just a little bit brighter. And then we're coming down to the front of the car, a little bit of a grill, um, the street, the, the <laughs> not the street light, the car light in that bottom right corner. And I think when I took the photo, there was a bit of a, there was another light behind me, which was, <laughs> which could end up for some quite confusing lighting patterns when you've got the light coming towards you and, and behind you as well. So there's a bit of light, maybe a tiny bit of light going against that car on, on the near side. This is the third car, or sorry, the fourth car the light car, the white car in the distance there. Furthest away from us. Just make sure that light, I could just spot it losing some of that, that brightness. So I've gone back into it with my uh, paper just to lift off, just make sure I'm lifting off that paint. It doesn't, the paint, paint doesn't travel anymore. So actually the, the paints uh, stayed wet for quite some time. I've had uh, half an hour or so almost to Keep playing with it. Strengthen up the church. I'm going down to a small synthetic brush now. This is a, I think this is a size four and it's, it's from, most of you wouldn't have, wouldn't have heard of WH Smith, but there are stationers in the UK and they, I think this brush must be about 20 years old. And it's a, a fairly smallish synthetic brush, but it's got quite a good point to it. And I can also get a flat edge to it as well. Bit of definition then to the top of the church tower and a little bit of darkness. Not sure 
if it's the top the top of the tree but I need to just make the top of the roof of the building a little bit of a harder edge a bit darker as well with this small brush just painting in around the that bare tree Time for some windows, an array of dark windows, light windows. I'm not going to, I don't often do windows as a perfect rectangle, but very often just leave a little bit out of that rectangle just so that it could be showing a, um, maybe a bit of light hitting the frame or a blind behind the window, behind the glass perhaps, something like that. So a few windows and doors. That left hand side of the church has got a little bit of, just a tiny, tiny bit of shadow on the left hand side. very dry brush now there's there's hardly any water in it at all if you if you're trying this you might want to actually have just maybe a tiny bit more water on your brush than up than i am so you don't get those unnecessary dry brush marks a bit more of a, a solid line little bit of a sh uh, shadow on this near side of that white car. And there are a few little bits of street furniture and signs in the street, which it's always good to do. Adds a bit more interest to a street scene. Vertical posts squares, rectangles on that post. Always good to include those. And there's some bins outside the houses. Maybe it's bin collection day, the following day. Maybe another little, little tiny window there. Make it more church tower-like by putting in that vertical window. It's not too clear from the picture, but I'll include it there, it makes it look, I think it makes it look a bit more church-like. Some bright red tail lights for the car. And there's a street light in here as well. A few verticals, maybe that last one was a bit of a dividing line between the two houses as well. Just a, a little bit of a faint line, not as, not as strong as the lamppost. Couple of windows or couple of panes showing on the wall of the hall on this right hand side. And the, the right hand side of the roof of the wall, we, we just really can't see the edge. It disappears into the night sky. Same, same sort of value in there. Soften up the edge of those wheels just a little bit. Strengthen some of the darker areas of the car. It is a little bit darker on the, it's actually darker on the top of the car. And of course, the bottom of the car and the end of the car, the back of the car that's facing us.
little bit of definition to the side of this near car. Pick up some cadmium yellow and a few lines on the, I think actually the painted lines on the car park would be white, but with the light, with the light hitting that surface, to me, they look like they're a little, little bit yellowish. So I've just picked up some cad yellow and not too much water on the brush and just painting a few lines there. Just connect, also connect that line with the car as well. The, the lines, they're all broken. Uh, you can't, um, can't really see what the lines say at all, where the lines go, but just a little bit of extra dimension, bit of texture to the road surface in the, in the foreground there. Bit of lavender for the tops of these. These pinnacles on the tower. Now I'm picking up some white gouache now with my small synthetic brush. I do actually have two gouaches down there in the bottom right corner. There's a white gouache on the right hand side, then a Naples yellow light or a light Naples yellow. Bit of a new introduction for me. Just some, a couple of obviously very opaque and thickish colors, which I will apply using very little water, but I do need to get in a few random twigs on the top of that canopy, catching the light. Again, with my, from my photo, you can't really see too much of where those individual branches are. It just looks like a, a mishmash of uh, different different branches all tangled up with each other but just try to create the impression of that that sort of confusion at the top of the tree and then a few branches on the left hand side just catching the light now I could use I could use my rigger brush here but as I've got this synthetic brush it's a fairly small brush quite a good point so I'll continue with that one, a few little panes. Now, a lot of the houses in this scene, they've got white window frames. In fact, nearly all of them have. And I find that if I, if I paint in those white window frames, it just draws too much attention to the windows. So I don't draw in the whole of the frame and I do use, as you can see, that sort of dry brush mark approach. So I don't get a continuous line. I might get a bit of a broken line or the white will be stronger in some areas. As I've got this, this paint now, I just continue it down to the car. Don't want to, don't want to overdo it uh, with the car, but the front of that bumper there Tiny bit of light to the gutter that's running along the edge of the roof. And a few little bits of white on the building and the road. There's a window there in the bottom left corner that maybe it's got some kind of a blind pulled down, but uh, it's quite bright. It's quite a light, quite a light window there. So, and that's a bit of contrast with, with a lot of the 
other darker windows as well. There are a few little lighter areas on this car, a bit of definition to the top of the windscreen at the front and make the headlight a little bit stronger. I'm probably guided by the light that's behind me when I took the photo. Neutral tint, ultramarine blue, alloys and crimson. Need to just fill in some of these lighter areas there on that car. Strengthen up the back. And then the wheel arch of that white car in the distance, back of the car. Again, use my fingertips if, if I've overdone it or put too much, too much paint on it. Connect that tree with the edge of the building. Change of brush, this is a Lebensen Rigger brush. A favorite brush of mine. This is one brush I haven't changed in a long, long time, but it gives me really fine lines. Great for doing twigs uh, of a branch, a deciduous tree like this, or thin wires, ropes, rigging, if I'm, if I'm doing a, uh, a seascape with a harbor scene or something like that but a really good, uh, you get a, a fine line. As fine as a, like the thinness of a hair, you can, you can get quite, quite narrow with the lines with this rigor brush. And with this brush, again, it's a slightly haphazard direction, directional, I'm, I'm pushing the brush to create the, the confusion of all those, those branches in the, uh, in the tree. Just through the windscreen of the car, you can just make out some kind of an object beyond it. Not sure if it's part of the car or a post just beyond, but dry brush mark for that. A few more little bits and pieces with this small brush. Just I'm basically pulling everything together now in the last few the last few minutes of this painting. And of course the most important thing with any painting is knowing when to stop. And the more I find the more I'm thinking about what to do, that's getting pretty close to the time to put down your brush and certainly with the white paint, not to overdo things too much. It's far better with these lighter areas to get to preserve the light of the paper and resist the temptation to get in the white paint. But I just feel I need it here with that, a little bit of light hitting the bonnet and a soft edge 
around that light as well. So with a, a tissue, just smooth out the edges, just create that little bit of a soft edge in there. Neutral tint, burnt out, a bit more of a definition to the bottom of these cars. Again, just needs strengthening up a tiny bit more. I think it's nearly there with those. And these two cars are almost they're pretty much joined joined together. A few more bits and pieces in the canopy of the tree, top of the tree. few branches maybe just just slightly going over that light source the street light and a rectangular street sign always good to have some of these these different sort of geometric objects in there little bin or something down there strengthen up that window arch And we're pretty much done. A little critique then at the end. Cricklade High Street, nighttime painting. A pretty simple nighttime painting for beginners to attempt. And what went right? Well, I think I got the perspective okay in the general composition. I'm still in two minds about that car in the bottom right hand corner, but it doesn't stand out too much. Might have overdone it a little bit with the white paint. Would have been best to try and preserve that, that lighter area around there um, with, with a little bit of that paper um, unpainted. But I got the edges okay. I as you saw through my demo, I kept lifting off that lighter area around there, trying to keep that light. That had to be a nice little sort of softness around that and a bit of a golden layer to that edge before it gets into that intense darkness. The sky, not black, trying to introduce some colors, soft edges around the church tower, a little bit of, um, touch of lavender to the top of those towers, dry brush marks defining some of the lines on that on that uh, tower, soft edges for the buildings and the light from that street light. Keep it nice and light there. Contrast with the darker, harder edge on the top of the cars, going a little bit darker over to the left, subtly a little bit darker over to the right, hard edge on the wall of the hall there. Uh, this, the actual rooftop of the hall, yeah, it sort of merges into the sky. Just We've got a bit of a hard edge there, but then it sort of disappears. Might have gone a bit too dark, a bit too um, dry with my brush mark on, on that mark there, but it's, it's sort of a fit, looks like a fairly artistic mark. And the, the trees as well, a little bit of looks like a little bit of sort of green showing through the brush marks. Um, Use the long round, the Princeton long round brush for that. Soft edge, soft uh, glow on the car park. Again, harder edges here and there. Dry brush mark with the yellow as well. Nice and dark on the left hand side. Yeah, I think I achieved my aim. Um, not 100% perfect. <laughs> if I did it again, I might do things a little bit differently perhaps tidy up some of the brush marks in that top corner there but I got it's a bit of a an edge there but maybe this could be I could excuse this as being a bit of cloud here on the right hand side and then the dark sky showing up on the left hand side yeah nice scene to contemplate thanks for watching I'll catch up with you on the next video bye bye